to Proxmox VE tutorial series. In this series, I will guide you to install and configure Proxmox virtualization platform or Proxmox VE. In this video, we will talk about recommended hardware, supported web browser, installation and setup, configuration, and then the VM installation. High quality server equipment is needed if you want to use this for the production environment. Proxmox VE supports clustering. This means that multiple Proxmox VE installation can be centrally managed and thanks to the integrated cluster functionality which Proxmox has. Proxmox VE can use a local storage like DAS, SAN, NAS as well as the shared storage like distributed storage CEPH. When we talk about the computing or server requirement, the hardware requirements, we mainly need to know the processor, primary memory, storage, and the network setup. So let us talk about the hardware requirements first before we dive into the installation of the Proxmox V. I will recommend to use 64-bit processor with virtualization capabilities. So you, you don't need to worry about it because in today's servers, this feature is by default enabled. So 2 GB minimum RAM is recommended for the Proxmox VE host operating system. And then host memory, it depends upon the guest operating system. So if you, you are using various operating systems, application servers or whatever. So depending upon the need of individual host servers, so you can upgrade the RAM. And then if you want to run CEPH, uh, then you can use the memory dedicated for that. And additionally, for each one terabyte storage, you need to have one GB RAM. So now let us talk about the storage itself. So there are two types of storage requirements. One is for the operating system storage and another is, is for the VM storage. So hardware RAID is recommended, but Proxmox supports the software RAID as well through ZFS. And ZFS is not available when hardware RAID is configured. And then shared and distributed storage is also possible in this one. My personal recommendation is to use the RAID 1 with uh, two SSDs for the OS storage especially. And then depending upon your VM and backup and storage requirements and the business size of course and deployment type and various other factors, you can choose any size and technology of storage. It totally depends. You can have the SAN, NAS, or even uh, inbuilt uh, storage of your servers. Now let us talk about the network requirements. I will recommend to use the multiple network adapters, especially for the redundancy. Minimum, I will recommend to use the gigabit network cards. And you can have additional network cards depending upon your storage technology, which you are using. And in case you want, if you want to use the clustering, etc., so you can use dedicated network cards for that. Proxmox sports the latest hardware for the network, 10 gigabit or higher. Now, how can we access and configure Proxmox? We can use any latest web browser to access the web UI of Proxmox and then you can configure it. Now, as we have seen the requirements of the hardware. Now let us dive into the installation of Proxmox. First of all, you need to download Proxmox. So download the latest version from the website. Okay, now the, now this is downloaded here. After downloading, burn it to the, we'll burn it to the CD or even we can use the USB disk. Now boot the server using the CD or the USB stick. So installation process will begin. Choose the target disk for the installation. I will recommend to use EXT file system for operating system storage or OS storage, but it all depends on your choice. Choose the country, zone, keyboard layout. And after setting up the strong password, where user ID is uh, remains root, you will get IP address from DHCP server in case DHCP server is available on the network. But in case you want to configure static IP, which I will recommend, so you can do that at this stage.
Now let the installation complete. After installation is completed, it will restart. Once restarted, you can now access web browser with the HTTPS protocol and 8006 port as default. Once you log in using your user ID and password, you will see the message box about the enterprise subscription. So you don't need to worry about that. It, as you can buy the enterprise subscription too, but that is not mandatory. So if you have expertise, you don't need to worry about enterprise subscription and you can manage everything by yourself. Now let us go to the server view. So the tree like view is available here. So which will show you the data center, which is data center is the high level uh, view of the servers, which can have the multiple servers within it, multiple nodes. Uh, you can see the cluster and multiple clusters and you can create a new cluster if in case it is available on your network. But for this tutorial, we will use only single node of server for learning purpose. Let us log in to the server using the terminal emulator. I generally use Putty for this purpose. You can download this from Putty website and then can access the server using the terminal. So once I logged in, first of all, I will need to disable the enterprise repository. To disable the repository, of course, I need to open the source. Path of the source is available from the help section of your Proxmox server. You click on help, simply copy the path and open the editor. To disable the source, just add hash at the very beginning of the first row or the row which you want to disable. Close the window by pressing Ctrl X and to save it, press Y. Now we will enable the community edition repository. Again go to the help section and copy the repository path. Open with editor. Remove whatever is already typed. Copy the list of sources from the help section and paste it here. Save the file. Now run the command to update. So apt-get update and then upgrade from the repository. Okay, now we are done with the repository configuration. Now we'll talk about the storage configuration. So in this test server, I have installed five disks. Uh, so one disk was for the uh, OS storage and I kept other for the general storage purpose. So from, from others, I will use one for additional storage just to configure as a, as a storage and rest of them I will be using for the RAID configuration. Now to configure RAID, I will use the software RAID in this case. I always recommend to use RAID 1.0 which means that uh, RAID 1 is for the fault tolerance and 0 for the performance. So I will use combination of both and for this purpose I will need minimum 4 disks. Now I will configure a RAID into ZFS section as software RAID and I will name it RAID 1.0. Okay, now let me add the drives to this RAID, RAID 1.0, 4 drives I have added here, done. Now my RAID 10 is configured and, and now I can have the VM disks and CT volumes inside this storage. Okay, now let us talk about the network configuration. For the network configuration, first of all, you need to make sure that uh, once you get the IP address from the DHCP, you need to change it to the static IP so that you can access the server using the same IP address all the times. If you want to know how to do that, so you click the link above or description below. So to update the network configuration without re rebooting the server, for this purpose, you need to install IF Uptown 2. And to install this application, you must enable the community repository that I have already explained how to do that. 
So and simply you need to install the package if up down to and if you want to know how to enable the community repository you can click the link below or a link above somewhere you can find that. Now network configuration consists of of course the physical network cards the bonding of these multiple network cards in case you have one and then the bridge that will be used as a virtual switch for your virtual machines and then you can configure the VLANs if your network has multiple VLANs department based or whatever purpose is you have configured the VLAN you can configure the virtual machines or the virtual server with the with the VLAN too and I have created a video for the network configuration in detail for the Proxmox so you can find somewhere in the description below. So I'm using Proxmox in a production environment on high-end server with 64 GB RAM and a hardware rate which is already configured in the server. So I don't need to configure the software rate in my case but just for the purpose to explain that how the software rate can be configured so I have explained you here in this video but if you have the hardware rate so you don't need to configure software rate in your server. So RAID is managed using separate server utility in my case as the server is already configured now I will move to the VM installation on my production server so that I can explain you how to do the VM configuration first and before installation let me take you to the storage where I can show you that where the installation media can be stored and where the uh, virtual machine disk or the container disk container volumes can be stored. Once you open node tree will be there and existing VMs and containers will be available. So you will see the available storage in my server I have two local storage one has the backups ISO images and container templates and then uh, we have another uh, section of the storage which has the VM disks and uh, container volumes and before we set up the new v virtual machine we need to upload the installation media ISO file for the guest operating system installation existing ISO images are here so let me upload a new image here and in case you have the CD or USB disk you can directly install using the CD or DVD uh, into the guest operating system so okay it is now uploaded let me now do a VM installation in Proxmox you can create VM you can clone the VM you can convert the existing VM to the template and then create the LXC container and we will now we will now create a virtual machine and its setup is here in general settings we will give the name of the VM choose the operating system the ISO image from where uh, the operating system will be installed so I have already uploaded that and even you can insert CD or DVD directly into the um, CD-ROM or DVD-ROM so from there it can install directly choose the type of guest operating system whether Windows or uh, Linux graphics card and the SCSI controller setting based on the guest operating system requirements or based on your server platform requirements choose the hard disk type and size again depending upon your requirement then the CPU how many cores you want how many sockets are there any one good thing is here that you can use the host CPU for the best performance to the guest CPU so your guest CPU can use the performance of host CPU as well it totally depends upon your requirement now we'll configure RAM again depending upon your requirement and host or guest OS requirements and of course the applications that you will be running now the network configuration put the network cards and whatever is your network configuration requirement the overview of your settings that you have configured verify the settings if you are satisfied with it if you are okay with whatever you have configured and now the VM is done click OK and then start the VM so once you start the VM so guest installation uh, uh, guest operating system installation will start and you're done was this not very easy and simple hope Proxmox video series is helping you if yes then hit the like button below 
and do not forget to give your feedback in the comment section. And to get the latest video on and more advanced videos on Proxmox video series, you need to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get the notification immediately when I publish a new video. So see you in next video. Take care and goodbye.